Killer coming at you today with another knife review. I was uh, lucky enough to be sent this uh, William Collins The Prepper. Uh, it's a custom chopper made by William Collins at WC Knives. Be sure to check out his channel. Um, anyway, so this is you know one of those big, uh, well, this one isn't too big. This is kind of a medium sized one or even a small chopper, um, but it's kind of to me, it's kind of reminiscent of the Chris Kane survival knife. Really cool knife. Look at that handle. That's my Carta. It looks like wood. That's my Carta. Um, comfortable in the hand. It really fills up your hand. You know, I got decent sized hands, and uh, I like when, especially if it's going to be something I'm chopping with, which right off the bat, I'll tell you, I'm not a real big fan of, but it's nice to know that a knife can handle it. Um, but anyway, this one really fills up your hand. That's important uh, if you're going to be, you know, end up chopping something with a knife. You definitely want a big fat handle on there so you can hang on to it well. Um, another aspect I like about this knife, you know, I'm not a big fan of these recurves like this, but just because it's so hard to keep this portion sharp. But on these recurves, uh, on these uh, choppers like this that have this recurve. Uh, feature here. I notice a lot of a lot of them are they get too thin width wise not thickness wise they get too thin width wise here and in my opinion it would create a, uh, a you know a stress point there a potential a place where it would potentially break um, if you did a lot of baton or a lot of uh, chopping with it um, in cold weather it's also great at swatting mosquitoes anyway um, I don't think this one will ha I don't think this will happen like that I mean as you can see um, that's a good inch and a quarter, you know, from the spine to the thinnest part of the recurve there, and uh, that that's a that's a great feature that, that he left that much material. Um, it's a wonderful blade, 1095 carbon steel. Um, I have hit it once or twice with the rock to see if it would throw sparks, and it does. I, I'm you know. Uh, I didn't want to mess it up because it's not my blade. I didn't want to go hacking on it with a rock on the back of it. Um, anyway, it's starting to get a little patina on it. Uh, this has been passed down to several YouTubers. And uh, I got it sharp. It was a little dull when it came to me, but I got it sharpened up pretty good. And this thing really bites into some wood. I mean, it's, you know, this this is the intent of this blade, this design was to chop through wood to be a wood processing knife, uh, you know, for the survivalist or, you know, the person who just enjoys chopping wood with a knife. And it really fits that bill perfectly. Um, but here in a couple weeks, deer season is going to open for me and I'm going to clean a deer with it. August 15th uh, is opening day of deer season in the lower state of South Carolina and I just happen to have a place down there where I hunt. So I'm going to take this down and if we're lucky enough to get a deer, um, I'm going to do a deer dressing with it. It's certainly not intended as a game processing knife, but you know, it's uh, I span nine so this is probably uh, right at a six inch blade. Um, which is perfect length for me. I know some people like, uh, you know, a thin, a four inch or less drop point blade to uh, to skin and process deer with. But for me, I like a six. I like that having that extra reach. Um, and uh, I think this will do a great job. So let's see what happens. Also forgot to mention, this is a pretty darn thick knife. Here's a... Uh, in comparison to my Condor, this is a Condor uh, four-inch basic bushcrafter, um, you know, which is not quite an eighth. So this knife right here is a fat eighth thick, if not knocking on the door three sixteenths. This is a this is a nice. It's a nice uh, thickness to weight ratio, um, and it's going to lend itself with this Scandi Vex that's on here 
very well to splitting. Uh, anyway, so far it's a fantastic knife. See that? I just missed that mosquito with the condor. So this thing definitely uh, is definitely way better than a condor at killing mosquitoes. Out here on public land, uh, one of my hunting spots, this location is going to remain undisclosed. <laughs> um, but anyway, I got the prepper with me and uh, also got my little Gerber sport saw. Got that in 1994. It's still kicking. But anyway, uh, I got a trail camera up here about half a mile. And I'm going to go in there and grab my trail camera or at least switch cards uh, if I don't take the camera down and uh, see what's going on and uh, we had a bunch of ice uh, a couple ice storms this past winter so I'm gonna use the prepper to clean my trail out cool Good so far. Sweet. On this prepper, uh, you know how the best laid plans of mice and men go. Um, opening weekend of deer season was August the 15th. Uh, well, it opened on August the 15th, and I was down in South Carolina the 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th, and it rained all four days. Um, <clears throat> so I didn't get to do a deer dressing with this knife, and it is time for me to send it on to someone else. Um, but I did see plenty of deer and had a good camp, uh, you know, camp for four days in the rain, five days really, because I went down on Wednesday, and saw plenty of deer, just didn't see anything that I really felt like was worthy of being shot. So here's a little footage.
and although it may look like those deer were drinking water they were actually eating uh, from a bait pile that was there that just the area was inundated with rain so bad that it was a river running down the road that I, road bed that I was hunting um, so that was pretty cool but anyway there's no doubt that this WC Collins prepper is an excellent uh, woodsman's knife just wonderful uh, I will say the 1095 you know I'm a stainless guy I like stainless steel because I can gut a deer I can you know process some wood do whatever camp chores I want to I can stick it back in the sheath when I get home I can put it on the shelf and it's not going to be rusted like this one is now and I have been just a freak about keeping oil and and uh, deer tallow on this knife since I got it and uh, as you can see I mean it's virtually brown A lot of rust here. Um, one thing I'll say for any knife maker when you're using high carbon steel uh, is the better finish you can end up with on the blade, uh, the more rust resistant it's going to be. This knife has a very, uh, not a rough finish, I mean it's a great satin finish, but it's very, it's very uh, pitty and there's a lot of striations. Um, from whatever sandpaper that he used or whatever to finish the knife and I just feel like if you went ahead and put a mirror finish on these blades on any blade um, That it's going to resist rust a lot better But again, that's my opinion. I'm not a knife maker But you can't deny this thing is an awesome wood processor It's got a lot of heft and weight to it uh, a lot of times you don't even have to chop just like that You're just going to break things up I mean, that's getting some serious bite there. You know, it's biting in a half an inch on this. Uh, this is. Uh, my brain ain't working right now. This is maple. And, you know, if I was stuck in a pinch one night. I would certainly want it to be stainless, but a knife that's capable of hogging up wood like that would be real handy. Um, real handy. So with that guys, check out William Collins. And he makes all kinds of knives. He makes bushcrafting knives, he makes skinners, he makes big wood choppers, small wood choppers, all purpose knives like this prepper. And uh, you know, it's definitely well worth your time to uh, check out his channel. And if you're a guy who is into custom knives, it'd be well worth your money to go ahead and buy you one of these preppers. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you on the next one.